Okay, all I want to do now is I'm going to build three tenants. Now, in order to be able to do that, I'm going to have to move from the dashboard to the tenant subsection. And then what I want to do is I want to find my tenant. I'll drag this over to where the illustration and the uh, drawing kit's not on top of it. And I want to find TN demo for tenant demo. And I'm just going to double click on it. And what's going to happen is, is it's going to, again, open up the console where I'm going to see all of the subsections that the tenant defines. And we've already gone through the networking tenant. What I want to do now is I want to take a look at the application profiles. Now remember, we don't have an application profile until such time that I create one. So I'm going to make ap-demo by right-clicking on the application profile. And I'm going to then say create an application profile. Now I'm moving video back and forth uh, in the lab right now which is one of the reasons that it's a little bit slower than normal but that'll be finished here in the next minute or so. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create ap-demo. So this is going to be application profile demo and what I'm going to do is at the end Instead of creating the endpoint groups here, which I could, I could just come over here and hit the plus sign and I can put in all of these names and configuration. Instead of doing that, I'm going to use the graphical tool for the creation of these endpoint groups. So all I'm going to do is just hit submit. Now that, what that's going to do is that's going to create my application profile. I'm going to double click on the application profile. Actually, I'm just going to click on the application profile that I just created and we're going to see again a very neat graphical representation of everything that I can define inside of my AP demo as an example I can create things that we've talked about so far contracts endpoint groups a micro segmented endpoint group where I do not allow communication a bare metal connection which is what we're going to be playing with today virtual machines as far as being able to connect to VM manager these are my these are the symbols for my VMMs. I have Microsoft, Red Hat. I mean, I can communicate to vCenter. In Microsoft, the, uh, the SC VMM. In Red Hat, I can communicate to a Red Hat server. In OpenStack, I can commute to OpenStack Compute. I also have Kubernetes. So these are containers that include Cloud Foundry and um, Red Hat Enterprise OpenShift, which we're going to be looking at. We have Layer 2 and Layer 3 out. We have Layer 4 through 7 devices that we can connect to. So you can see there's any number of things that we can work with. I'm going to go ahead and create three endpoint groups. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag down this little icon that says endpoint group and it's going to say here is how you can create one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an endpoint group called EPG dub dub dub. Now from there if I want to restrict traffic, I can say intra EPG isolation. I can turn that on. But by default, what will end up happening is every endpoint that I make a part of this endpoint group will be able to communicate with all of the other endpoints in the group. So I'm going to leave this as default. So in all honesty, the only thing that I mandatorily have to enter is this red area here that means I need to assign it to a bridge domain. Now I only have one bridge domain. I just took path of least resistance and that's what I'm going to do. So I selected it, and what I'll do is I'll hit OK. Now, I'm going to make the other three. And let me see if I can blow this up a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. And I'll go ahead and drag the other two, excuse me. We will say this is going to be endpoint group app. And then we'll tie it to the same bridge domain. I said DB, I should have said BD. The staying up until 3 o'clock in the morning teaching classes uh, is uh, starting to wear on me, I guess. And we'll create EPG DB. And we'll tie it to this bridge domain. So I have www, app, and database as my EPGs. Now, what I would do now is I would determine what these EPGs are going to be connected to. So as an example, if this EPG was connected to a VMware vCenter server, what I would do is I'd grab this, I'd bring it all the way down, I would connect it to the endpoint group, and then what I would do is I would create all the relevant information. I could do that by clicking the plus sign here. I'm not going to do that right now. 
the other part of this is is that we are going to be connecting via bare metal configuration so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to use two of these endpoint groups for my lab and what I'll do is I'm going to grab the the bare metal config and I'm going to go ahead and attach it and what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to define things like the VLAN domain that I'm going to use the path that I'm going to use and encapsulation that I'm going to be working with now <clears throat> When we look at what happens here, notice I can do that for VLANs or for vSANs if there were, this were to be a fiber channel style connection. Now if I hit plus, the plus sign here, notice I'm going to connect to a VLAN domain and it says here that I can use a pre-existing one called Fizz, but remember that's going to be common to everybody. I want to be able to create a domain that I'm going to work with just myself and that's going to require me to create a physical domain. Now it's important to understand that we have many different domains inside of the ACI that we can work with. Now where are they visible? Well, domains are defined under the Fabric tab and from the Fabric tab we go to Access Profiles or Access Policies, excuse me, and on the bottom here we have Physical and External Domains. If I hit the down arrow here, we're going to see that I have Physical Domains those bridged layer 2 domains that I talked about in the blackboard, the routed external domains, those are those layer 3 domains that I discussed, sometimes called layer 2 and layer 3 out, and I have a fiber channel domain that I connect to. Well, that doesn't answer the question about the virtual or the VMM domains. Those are defined here under the virtual networking. So when I go to the virtual networking, I can create a VMM domain. And you can see here I can communicate to Microsoft, to OpenStack, to Red Hat, and to VMware in the current deployment of ACI. Now we're not going to deal with these until later on in the course. Right now I said our primary focus was going to be on physical infrastructure and we were going to use a physical domain. And in order to be able to do that, we are going to have to create a physical domain. And that's going to require an interaction between something called pools, where I can define a pool of VLANs or VXLANs or vSANs or multicast addresses that I want to use. So I can create a pool of addresses and then what I can do is I can apply those addresses to any of these domains that I create, specifically the physical domains. Uh, are going to be where we're going to be paying our attention. But before that, I want to actually walk through this process on the Blackboard. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end this portion of the walkthrough. I'll just uh, highlight the fact that we have indeed created the application. If I go ahead and click the actual application down here, the AP, we have set it up. But you'll notice I didn't save anything. So that's why I always check it. I always forget to save. So what I want to do is I'm going to create my endpoint groups. But let's say I didn't want to use the EPG configuration. All i got to do, if I didn't want to use the GUI, all i got to do is just hit the down arrow here. And I'm going to have the capability of, if we look, EPGs, notice there's nothing defined. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here and create two EPGs. So uh, just for the sake of conversation, I'm going to create EPG chassis 1. And I'm going to attach it to this bridge domain. And I will say finish and then what I shall do is create EPG chassis 2 and I shall hit domain domain demo bridge domain and then what I'm going to do is if I go up here I'm going to see these configs or these two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit submit and that should actually allow me to be able to um, see these after I move over. So if I go to networking now, it's not going to make those go away. Networking, I have my, v, my VRF, I have my bridge domain, and then just to make sure that they're still here, which they are, we set them up. Now inside of the EPG, there are going to be things that I can do. So as an example, if I hit the down arrow, notice I can assign EPG members. I can also associate VMs and bare metal assignment with the domains that we're going to be talking about in the next video. So let's get that done so that we can actually come full circle here. And what I want to do is I want to be able to allow devices to be able to communicate with one another via the ACI fabric. So with that being said, I'll see you guys back at the Blackboard where we're going to be talking about domains, specifically physical domains. See you there.